Hi again. Let's talk about assignment number two. I apologize first for uh, bombarding everybody with all of these um, webcasts one after the other, but uh, time-wise it makes it easier to, to break these up instead of trying to do them all in one, which isn't always possible. So for assignment number two, I've uh, read everybody's, and I usually read them uh, twice, and I've given you feedback both on the essay itself that you gave feedback to, so I gave feedback to your feedback, if you will, and then uh, commented on some of your ideas as you were talking about them in your response papers, what you would uh, tell this, uh, this committee uh, about the piece of writing. So when I send my feedback to you, you can open up both documents and look and see basically what I, what I wrote. So I tried to be as, as, uh, as clear and as detailed as I, as I could be as I was in, in the previous draft. So hopefully there's lots of new things in there to, uh, to read and to, to think about and reflect upon. So first, uh, a couple of things. Um, I felt that everybody did a, a reasonably good job at, you know, looking at this piece of writing and trying to figure out, okay, what are some of the problems with this piece, as well as what are the strengths of this, and what I actually would talk to the student about. Because uh, of course, whenever you're giving feedback, it's a rather delicate issue. And when people, whenever people write, the issues of being vulnerable and sharing your writing with others is something to be acknowledged, I believe. So many of you, when you were looking at the piece, talked about what you felt some of the strengths were. So, for example, it was certainly organized. You could see some sem semblance of, of an idea and the development of an idea. Um, there were certainly clear paragraphs that were you know, marked by introductions, uh, introductory sentences and conclusions, topic sentences, those kinds of things. Um, there was certainly uh, traces of a purpose, or you could say a thesis, where the student was uh, trying to take a position or make a claim. And there was evidence of where the student tried to draw on various uh, outside sources, uh, at least there was one interview and then there was one other source. Um, so you could see where there was some type of citation going on. Uh, the student's vocabulary also was relatively, um, you know, was relatively clear in terms of what he was trying to talk about. And so the feedback you gave the student regarding all of those was, was quite good and that many of you felt the topic was very interesting. In one case, uh, actually responded to the student, one, one, uh, one, one person responded to the student as from the voice of being a, a mother, a working mother, and how much she appreciated uh, what the student said and what he acknowledged and sort of his own coming to realize the benefits and the um, contributions of working mothers. So that was all really, really, really quite good. In terms of areas that you felt that this piece could have been improved. Uh, many people talked about sort of the issue around the, the problematic thesis statement. So to read what the student wrote, he said, um, at first also think that mothers are better not to work, but after doing some research by interviewing and reading articles about my mother, I changed my mind. So uh, many people said, well, what in what sense do you change your mind? Could you be maybe a little bit more explicit? And then also the issue around what is the connection between his changing his mind and his mother? So is this paper actually about his own mother or is it about working mothers? So the sense of what was reflected in the title and then what appears in this last sentence, there's a bit of confusion here and perhaps that's something that could be discussed with the student to figure out, well, what exactly, what role is your mother playing in this paper? Uh, one of you commented that one way in which this thesis could have been improved would be to go actually to the conclusion where the student had an opportunity to articulate more about what he believed. And that conclusion read, the first sentence of the conclusion was, uh, I believe that it's not fair to stop mother from working and blaming working mother as a cause of negative effect to the children. So in that sense, he's taking more of a position there and the claim is a little bit more solid. So uh, some of you felt that perhaps you could kind of, uh, the student could combine this uh, topic sentence from the conclusion with the concluding sentence of the introduction to kind of flesh out a thesis there that's a little bit more crisply articulated. And I think that's a great idea. 
I would also add that, and this was also brought up in some feedback, that the student starts talking about European, European country, working mothers in European countries going over the last seven decades or so. And so as readers, we first start looking at this and think, hmm, okay, we're, so we're being situated in Europe. Perhaps this is about working mothers in Europe. Okay, that's fine. So maybe examples from Germany, France, England, things like this. But in the concluding sentence, uh, or the paragraph, the thesis seems to be rather broad, maybe all working mothers or his working mothers, so there's a bit of a confusion there. In other words, what are you talking about exactly? Where are these working mothers, and what aspect do you want to focus on? And if you look at the details in the, in the paper itself, most of the examples come from uh, working mothers who are living in Malaysia. So now there's sort of a disjunct here. What is the connection between working mothers in Malaysia and European data coming out of European countries? So those two things don't actually really match quite well. Uh, if he had started out saying something like, um, you know, data that's driven from, you know, Europe, North America, um, Asia, for example, has shown that something, something. And then picked up on the, uh, the Asian example and then proceeded to uh, speci specify and talk about Malaysia. That would have been one suggestion I think that would have been helpful for the student. But somehow getting him to uh, match up Europe and Malaysia was a bit misleading. And I think that so those examples that he gave, maybe uh, I would have recommended perhaps in his thesis statement, he basically you know, articulate that he's actually looking at working mothers in Malaysia and the contributions that they make uh, uh, opposed as opposed to what may be common assumptions about working mothers in Malaysian culture and society, for example. Many of you also pointed out in the last paragraph, uh, he brings in the notion of a democracy and citizenship, and this seemed like a lot, some new ideas that didn't really correspond to things he had been talking about. So that would have been another uh, idea to actually say to him, okay, why don't you take this idea of democracy and citizenship and integrate that into your thesis to talk about how um, through the development of democracy in Malaysia, the idea of women as good citizens or working mothers as good as citizens has now sort of changed this particular uh, you know, societal beliefs as to their contributions, something like that. So you're uh, allowing the student to kind of um, pull all these things together, which then would allow the rest of the paper to make a little bit more sense. Because as it is, it seems a little bit unfocused in that we seem to be jumping around. In terms of his citations, he talks about uh, Mrs. Nural Ahmed, which could possibly be his mother. We don't know. and We don't really know why he's interviewing her. Um, and then he mentions in a couple of paragraphs later about an article, uh, LR. We have no idea who that, what that is, where that's coming from. So reminding the student about citation conventions, and many of you did that, is really important. And also, of course, to include a reference list so we know where he got these different items from. Um, one last point was looking at issues around hedging. So he says one comment, for example, uh, this is in the second paragraph. Uh, this uh, always true for low and middle income families. Well, these notions of always true, um, that certainly isn't the case. So when you're talking to the student about academic writing, for example, because remember he's a first year university student and is expected to write academically and, and to develop, you know, this uh, rhetorical um, conventions around this genre that Hedging is going to have to be part of it, so perhaps um, this is mostly true, or many scholars feel that this is uh, largely true for. So teaching language around that would be certainly one way for him to learn, you know, uh, discussing the subtleties around research and his position vis-a-vis -vis all this research. So in a nutshell, those were some of the content area issues that I think the student could have spent more time developing. Now, there, certainly there were sections in here where a paragraph, maybe the introductory paragraph, the idea itself was fine, and you could go in and start giving corrective feedback in that area. I think that would have been very useful. Um, but I think that to just talk about the grammar of this piece without addressing anything around the ideas um, sends a message that, you know, 
the gaps between the thesis statement, for example, and the supporting uh, details, the lack of citation or clarifying uh, around where these sources are coming from, for example, is problematic. They need to be flushed out and the student needs to be better prepared for doing academic writing at the university level. Um, because if you were to make these mistakes in other content area courses, I don't think you would fare very well. Um, so, uh, grammar aside. And one last thing is the title Working Mothers itself is uh, still a little bit broad. And I would certainly have encouraged him as he works through his thesis to possibly refine that a little bit more. So those are some of the issues around this particular paper. A lot of you were able to, uh, to kind of talk about the content and the grammar and different things that you would do that I thought were quite helpful and very useful and I think ways in which the student would have definitely improved. So uh, tomorrow I will send all those papers out to you. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.